All right, everybody. Wow, oh, that's a lot darker than I thought it would be. Hello, and welcome to the UIUC Film Festival here on the campus of University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We are in the beautiful, beautiful Spurlock Museum, um, which is... Oh, that didn't work. Get it brighter for you. There we go. The beautiful Spurlock Museum here in the theater on the University of Illinois campus. It is Saturday, April 30th at 5.44 p.m. So thank you for tuning in. Let's get this show started. So here what we're going to do is a little pre-show. Um, I know we don't have the best lighting, but it is dark in here. Um, at this moment, we are eagerly awaiting the start of the film festival. The Spurlock Theater at the gorgeous University of Illinois is just humming and alive with energy. In the audience, there is no shortage of student filmmakers, friends, family members, professors, media industry professionals, and general happy moviegoers. Uh, so you can find all the information you need to know about this film festival online at uiucfilmfest.com. It is linked in the description below for more information. The website is going to have a full lineup of films and the exact event program outline, so I'd highly recommend checking it out. And that's uiucfilmfest.com. It is also on the banner that is at the bottom of the screen right now. So, for today's lineup, we have a list of amazingly talented filmmakers whose work you're not going to want to miss. We are dividing up the work into two programs. So the first program is going to be full of short form content, um, which is going to be comedy sketches, um, short, short films, uh, music videos, musical numbers, or promotional work for, uh, you know, commercials. Um, starting at 7.30, we'll jump into the second program, which contains a lot more of the long-form narrative cinema. And this is where I get the most excited and where you're going to want to be sure that you're totally tuned in and watching the entire broadcast. Uh, we start with Lincoln Rogers' The Goji Project, which is in collaboration with the College of Media as they work through the Media and Cinema Studies major. Uh, they actually have a production course here at the University of Illinois taught by Victor Font, Professor Font, a 400-level capstone course, uh, where the whole class comes together on an idea and works together as a sort of production company uh, reflecting the real world uh, and assemble short film entirely on their own. So the Goji Project is this film that they've assembled. Following this, we will have some sort of short videos to break up the momentum a bit, keep you on your toes. Um, and then we have the next long-form narrative titled A Tint of Red, which is co-directed by my good friends Joanna Raimo and Gio Giles Sanchez. A Tint of Red is a passion project. Um, the idea was originally created by Gio as a concept for a feature film. He actually wrote a feature film length worth of script. Um, but ended up cutting it down for a proof of concept that he could actually realistically film uh, as a college student. So uh, this film was in production um, as close to as last weekend, shooting the final scenes, wrapping it up, and edited within a week of uh, this film festival. So please excuse any of the editing mistakes in this one. Um, not that there are any. Uh, following A Tint of Red, um, we have some short form content, uh, most notably, a music video from up-and-coming rap artist, Michael the Author. Uh, Michael the Author has recently released a new single from his featured, uh, his future album titled Michael the Album, which is coming soon. Uh, this music video is for his song titled Another Day, which explores relevant social issues that our generation is plagued with. Uh, Michael the Author recently broke one million streams across streaming platforms, which is a huge milestone for the artist as he is in his freshman year of college and has big plans for his future career. I just wanted to throw another shout out, Michael, I know you're watching this, and happy birthday. It is his birthday, April 30th, so everybody type happy birthday in the chat. That is one of the best features about this uh, streaming online uh, platform. I know it looks scary right now from this light, it's literally my iPhone flashlight, but um, it's that it's interactive, it's engaging. So please leave a comment, um, throw a like on the video, share it with your friends, um, and we'll get started. Um, but following uh, Michael the Author's Another Day um, music video debut, 
Uh, the final film of the night is titled Bodies of Water. Uh, Bodies of Water was created by Ryan Lashak, yours truly, and first screened in conjunction with the College of Media for over 100 people. Uh, the film is available to stream online on the creator's YouTube channel, where it has amassed almost 15,000 views on its own. Um, and a special note, I wanted to add here that no one else knows in the entire production of this film festival is that I've added a special message that will play just before Bodies of Water. It's two minutes long and should begin somewhere around 8.20, 8.20 p.m. Central Time or so. My math is probably off, but you're not going to want to miss that. It's behind the scenes of the production of student filmmaking here, and not even the actors or anyone involved know that I'm screening it. So I hope that this will surprise everyone, and especially those who have been working so hard to, to get this festival to you guys, since we've watched all these films so many times, I think it'll be fun to kind of um, get something in there that they haven't seen before. Um, so. While you're hanging around on the live stream, interact with us. YouTube is a great platform for you to comment. That's the whole point of it being on YouTube instead of somewhere else, is for you to comment and engage with us. We're gonna be responding to your comments. Um, during the filmmaker panel, you actually have an opportunity to ask your questions and get them answered in real time through the, the YouTube channel comments. Um, I will also be there uh, for the pre-show, uh, which we got ten, about 10 more minutes until the program begins. Uh, to respond to comments, and then at our point, our lovely MCs and hosts will take over as the in-person event begins. Um, so if you're just arriving on the stream now, uh, please rewind the stream of the bar at the bottom of the player and watch back this whole introduction about the event. So much useful information, I'm not going to reiterate again. Um, but at this point, I will now be responding to comments or questions in the chat of this live stream and also conducting some interviews with some of the local talent. Um, so as this theater is filling up, I'm going to take a look at what comments that we have going on here and um, see if we've got anything going. We do not, which is fine, not a big deal. Um, I'm going to call in one of the actors and actresses who have been featured a lot here, uh, that are going to be featured a lot here in the University of Illinois Film Festival. Um, they are going to come down shortly and join me here for a little interview. Um, we're actually going to hear first up from uh, Matt Peterson, who is the sound recorder on my short film, and he's actually an alumni of the College of Media, but uh, he's here. <laughs> Matt, Matt, just you. Yeah, He's here to tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what it's like to be on a production in a student short film. Come on, take a seat here. Um, this is Matt Peterson. Howdy. Um, he was uh, the sound operator for Bodies of Water in my production. He's actually an alumni of the College of Media. I am. Um, so just tell us a little bit about um, what it was like to be in a student production. Yeah, so it was it, it was pretty awesome. I, I came from an audio background. I had no like real film. Like, I made my own film projects when I was in high school, just like skits and stuff with my friends. But um, my audio experience came from, I was a music major at a different school out in the suburbs. And I had a lot of like recording studio uh, experience, um, and so then I was like, okay, well, I know audio. I know how to make audio sound good. I know what to look for. So I just kind of uh, hit up Ryan and was like, hey, if you ever need audio help, like, never even done a film before, but I probably could at least try to make it sound good. And um, yeah, it just turned out great. It was uh, just a super dope experience, like getting to kind of like you know hear the sound within the the headphones while you're shooting just completely different yeah. sounds really amazing compared to what you're just you know sitting there while the scene's happening it, make, it really makes it come to life it does it really does it's so different to hear that sound coming through the headset of the boom know, right tell me a little bit about like holding the boom and especially on bodies of water where you're out in the water on a kayak right um, um, tell me about how that kind of experience was for sure well for any future boom mic operators i would recommend going to the gym and hitting shoulders oh like, yeah every day because it is just a straight like you're just doing that for about seven hours a day um so it's a bit rough if you're not used to it like me uh but like it just puts you in a lot of super interesting ideas you have to think of the shot like obviously you don't want to get the boom in in the shot so you have to think of all right where am i placing my body how am i placing the microphone to still get the right uh audio and for bodies of water it was really crazy because we actually got you know we had this really high-tech expensive equipment oh yeah um that was i think the schools too a lot of it um and we didn't want to get it wet whatsoever so we like had to 
you know, it's not as just simple as like, oh, let's go out to the lake and shoot this thing. We had to mm -hmm. float out ki kayaks, like keep ourselves steady while doing our job. Um, so it was de definitely a, a story I can tell uh, my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, how I want to ask, kind of, since these people are all online and they're watching through their stream their screens at home whatever right. screen that might be on maybe they're on their phone on the train or something yeah. checking in from work um, kind of give me describe what the atmosphere is like here what's going on what's the energy uh, in terms of the actual film festival yes yeah no, Just I mean, this the, this room that we're in here yeah it's pretty electric Ryan I have to say <laughs> um, no it's, exactly it, right, yeah electric it's really cool um, just to get like you know, I know one story, and it's you, um, and just this one project that, or a few projects that I worked on mm -hmm. with you. But to know that there's a bunch of students with the same, you know, uh, with all completely different creative visions. Um, I, I know what it's like to, you know, be excited to share your work, and like this is like kind of the culmination of the year of like, this is our work, this is what right. we've done, and it's a whole like montage of like seven. I don't even know how many students are here. Fifteen, would you say? Different movies we're seeing or films? Yeah, there are eighteen total films mm -hmm. or pieces of work content that we're going to be viewing tonight. The first, I want to say, I don't know the exact numbers. You guys know better than me because okay. the program's online. But I think it's twelve and six. That's awesome. But I might not be correct. That I, that's, sounds close to me, and it sounds pretty awesome regardless. Yes, um, no, it is amazing. We've got a great lineup here again. I've told you guys you can find that information on the website if you're looking for more information. I wanted to ask you, Matt, uh, what are you most excited about, you know, being here as an attendee? What are you looking forward to from this from this festival? Totally. Um, well, you've hyped up the, the behind-the-scenes uh, action uh, video for a couple projects we've done uh, quite a bit, so I'm excited about that. Um, I think it's just, in general, between that and seeing the films again, um, going to be cool to relive those experiences and just sitting here as an audience member. I and mean, of course, also to see all the new projects that I've never even, you know, people I've never heard of before, projects I've never seen before. So um, I'm pretty excited all around, gotta say. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're going to um, check in with some of the actors and actresses who worked on the Bodies of Water project that Matt was involved in. But uh, that's perfect. If you can send them my way, that'd be Absolutely. great. Thank you for your time being on the stream. Anything Absolutely. you want to say to anyone who's watching? It's going to be a blast. I promise. Yeah, so make sure you stick around to Bodies of Water. It is the last film of the night. It's going to be starting around 8.20 p.m., but uh, take Matt's word for it, not mine. Sweet. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Ryan. Alrighty, like I said, we're going to jump back in here with some interviews uh, from... Let me get that focus back on me. There we go. So with some interviews from the actors and actresses in some of the films, uh, they were featured in A Tint of Red, uh, which is going to be playing in the second program as well as Bodies of Water. And uh, coming around here now, we have Anthony Maggio. Here, take a seat here. Um, Anthony, or Tony, was, uh, was part of, like Matt was, uh, the Bodies of Water production. Um, so just tell me a little bit about like what is it like to be like working and acting in student short films on campus? Um, how's your experience so far been with student filmmaking? It's so exciting because with student filmmaking you have so much freedom and liberty like I feel like with like theatrical things and like plays you have to follow a script and you have to follow someone else's vision mm -hmm. and like I like the fact that it's constantly changing. It's like very fresh right. and like it's very collaborative. I feel like student short films are much more collaborative and like. So you have. What is your major here at the University of Illinois? I'm an acting major. An acting major. Um, so that you're not always doing short film productions. Sometimes you're doing onstage theatrical mm -hmm. performances. What would you say like? Are some of the differences between being on stage versus uh, in some of the student short films that you've been involved with? Well, when you have the camera like that close to you, you definitely have to like reel in your movements and like some things that would be good on stage so that the person in the back of the, ha the house could see it would be too big for the camera. Right. And it would just look like, like a caricature, you know, so you just have to have everything more internal. Yeah. yeah, that's no, that's awesome. I wanted to ask, um, since a lot of the people are streaming in from like on their cell phones, like on the train or in work, or or maybe they're watching it in a living room. I know the Lashak family is tuning in um, in the basement on the big screen. Um, what is the kind of atmosphere? What is the energy like in this theater? Um, what's what's kind of going on? What are they missing by being? It online? is booming. There is you have. Artists packed into a theater. 
you can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I wanted to ask you um, what you are most excited about, you know, being an attendee at the, at the University of Illinois Student Film Festival. Um, are you looking forward to the films, the filmmaker panel, the food? What is it that you're most excited oh, about? Definitely the popcorn brought me here, but I'm staying for the for the Le Shock films that are just <laughs> crowding the pamphlet. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Amazing. Well, great. Um, that's perfect. If you want to send over Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yeah. Right. And we'll do a little interview. Thank you, Tony. Thank Ma- you. Is there anything else you wanted to say to um, the, stu- the viewers <laughs> of the Le Shock, or the University of Illinois Film Festival? Hi, guys. Over here. Over here. Hi, guys. <laughs> There you go. Thanks for tuning in. Tony Maggio. Catch him in A Tint of Red and Bodies of Water and probably something else in the film festival. Yes, sir. Awesome. Right, Thank you. So, again, we're going to get started here in a minute or two. I'm waiting on the event to get started here. Um, and then I'm going to transition the camera over to the, the hosts and the MCs of this event, and we'll get started. So... Thank you guys for whoever tuned in here early and catching the pre-show. Um, we're going to do a quick, very quick, um, we're going to do a very quick uh, interview here with Elizabeth Gornson. She was an actress in a lot of my films, just like Tony, um, and uh, and get her input. So, hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> Uh, this is Elizabeth Gornson. She was an actress in a lot of my in a lot of my films, a lot of my work. She's going to be featured in a lot of these uh, short films coming up, like *Attentive Red* by by Joanne and Gio Gilles Sanchez. Yes. Um, and also *Bodies of Water*, directed <laughs> by yours truly. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask first um, what that's kind of like being in student filmmaking and, and being in these productions. Um, um, just describe your experience. Honestly, I like I didn't really know what. Oh. I didn't really know what it was like because um, like I've only seen like movies and shows so when I got introduced and I've only done like musicals and plays so when I started doing short films starting with Ryan I like was like am I doing this right with the camera being in front of me am I like looking at a certain way is it like realistic am I being authentic Mm -hmm. and I just like was not sure but like now I have so much experience with it because of like Ryan and also like you make the process very easy and like filming and like, how you move the camera and how quick it is uh-huh. like it honestly feels like I'm just there and the camera isn't there um, and it, we're just acting and we're just doing something and um, the process it was honestly it was great working with you and I loved working with you because it was it's quick good to hear. and it was it was it was very Consistent, yes. Okay. <laughs> and consistent, consistent. Uh huh. Well, that's that's always consistent. That's amazing to hear. I mean, um, not to boost my ego too much, um, but I wanted to ask you, what is the atmosphere like here? Because a lot of these people are watching, you know, on their screens, their iPhones, on the train, maybe they don't know what it's like to be here. So, if you can just kind of give a description of, of the in-person experience. The in-person, like here, being at the film festival. Mm. Um, it's really exciting. It feels like an actual like, movie premiere because um, it's like a theater and people are like, there's popcorn and drinks and snacks and like everyone's like excited and you can feel the energy in the room and there um, there's a screen where they're like promoting all the short films that are going to be presented and it's really exciting. I am really excited and yeah. So you're saying you're excited a lot. This is my third question is, what are you most excited about? <laughs> That's perfect. Leads right into um, it. Um, so is it is it the, the films? Is there a particular film? Maybe the filmmaker panel, the food? Tony was here for the popcorn, but it's staying for the food I think the films. I'm excited to watch all, everyone else's film. I've seen some really cool covers. And, like, I've only, like, really have ever known about Ryan short films. And then, like, I worked with Joanna, and that was, like, really new for me because I didn't really work with anybody else except Ryan. And, like, to see all these short films done by, like, so many different directors and people I haven't even heard of, I think that's really exciting. The covers look really sick. So I'm excited to see everyone else's short films and everyone's creative, pro- like, pieces. What's a short film that they should be sticking around, making sure they're watching 
If, if there were one short film you had Body, to come out. Bodies of Water. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Bodies of Water. So Bodies of Water is going to be starting probably <laughs> somewhere around 8.15, 8.20 p.m. Uh, Central Time Zone tonight so in about two and a half hours um and it starts with a little special vignette that's coming right before that not even she knows about that oh, she wow. is in so so please stick around till that and uh you're gonna want to see it yeah. um and it, it'll be cool seeing their their live reactions to this piece of content that they've never seen before so Yay. is there anything else you wanted to, to no say in that's it thank you thank okay. you so much perfect yeah, yeah. thank okay. you bye guys <laughs> All right, and that concludes our pre-show. We're going to get started with the uh, the live event here, and I'm going to click over to the to the MCs and the hosts. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, leave your comments, likes, shares, share it around with people, and uh, we will see you uh, here shortly. We'll get the film started. Refer to the program and the website for, for more information. All righty, thank you all. guys for joining us at the 2022 UIUC Student Film Festival. Um, this is brought to you by the U of I College of Media, Department of Cinema Studies, and the students of Max 464. We also want to thank the Spurlock Museum for hosting us in this lovely theater. And we want to thank Elevated Media for live streaming the festival. You can stream this. So we're ready. Um, I'm Ryan. I'm going to be one of the hosts. I'm Sophia. And I'm Justin. And we will be your MCs for tonight. This, um, this event is especially important because this is actually the first in-person student film festival in three years. We've done everything we can to make you next special, except invite most of them. And I'm sure you probably already see, we have free concessions, including a donation from Heartland Coca-Cola. We also have popcorn donated from AMC Champagne 13, so we can recreate the experience of seeing a movie on the big screen. Except we have 19 movies to show, and so much more, all in about three hours. <laughs> Our first program will feature a collection of shorts that will last about 50 minutes. During the 10 minute intermission that follows, we'll be setting up for our panel discussion with some of the filmmakers whose work you'll we'll see tonight. And after we wrap up our second program, we are going to be handing out some really awesome prizes and we're answering trivia questions, so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you stick around all the way until the very end. We promise that we are going to get you out here at a reasonable hour. Not 1 a.m. So everybody settle in. Uh, we're going to be starting the film, the first program, shortly. Tonight is all about, of course, celebrating student filmmaking. So can we get a big round of applause for student filmmaking? <laughs> you guys excited? while you watch these movies, because the students that you're going to be seeing tonight might be the future famous films, famous filmmakers. The movies will come out shortly. Thank you guys, and we hope you enjoy. Okay, so we are on to the, uh, the desktop cam here. Um, you guys hear it here first. Uh, the films are going to be starting at 6.15.
Um, you're not going to want to miss uh, the start of these. That is in seven minutes, uh, 6.15 p.m. Central Time Zone uh, here in Illinois. So um, the films are going to get started in about seven minutes here. And um, we're starting on time at 6.15, at 6 so that way you can use the duration of the each film, each short, each piece of work or content um, and know exactly when the next work is being shown. So that way you can uh, tune in or tune out at different points to catch different films. Um, we wanted to make sure we start this at an appropriate time so that way you're able to do that. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the theater is filling up here and uh, we're going to get started in about six minutes. Um, people are still filtering in. And uh, it's been a really great event here, as you saw the hosts and MCs uh, introduce the uh, event so far. And um, what I wanted to show was that outside of this event, this, this amazing theater space that we're in here, um, is a small sort of reception area where we were able to collect uh, different experiences that um, festival goers would be able to uh, get involved in. Uh, like we had, uh, as a <laughs> as uh, Tony Maggio pointed out earlier. And if you wanted to see anything earlier right now, uh, before 6.15 the festival starts, so you can just rewind the bar here at the bottom of your screen and uh, check back in on something you may have missed. It is all being recorded to DVR and will be uploaded to the website afterwards. Aside from that, uh, we had uh, popcorn and free complimentary concessions, uh, a whole bunch of snacks and movie-going uh, things the likes, uh, exactly what you would expect to find in a movie theater. We had a generous donation from AMC Theaters uh, where they pre-popped a whole bunch of popcorn for us and uh, delivered it to the uh, beautiful Spurlock space here at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, aside from that, we also had a VR demonstration set up where people could experience virtual reality films, um, a nice experimental genre of this film festival outside in the lobby of the Spurlock Museum. Uh, they were able to um, witness what it would be like to experience a narrative plot within a 360 degree uh, screen where you can actually control the camera, walk around, interact with objects. So that was a cool virtual reality setup that we had here at the University of Illinois uh, Film Fest. Aside from that, we also had um, a photo booth that people were taking advantage of. Uh, if you're going to be posting those photos, make sure to tag hashtag UIUC Film Fest and we'll get them on our page. Um, aside from that, we had the photo booth, we had the VR setup, we had free concessions, complimentary concessions, and um, a whole bunch of popcorn. And also we had a generous donation from Heartland Coca-Cola. Um, that's a local bottler here uh, next to the University of Illinois, um, where they donated a whole bunch of cases of Coke products uh, for, for the in-person theater audience to enjoy. So as you can see, people behind me are enjoying this, um, the, the Coca-Cola donation, the, um, the AMC Theaters donation, as well as the College of Media, has uh, been very, very helpful in uh, funding this project and this, this film festival from the start, um, and helping pitch in with donations um, in every sort of aspect you can think of, from, from the promotional material to, to snacks at the event, to reserving the space, and, and everything else you see is, uh, is major contributions from the College of Media and Spurlock Museum through the Ver University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Aside from that, our final sponsor is Elevated Media, uh, which is a video production company uh, based out of Naperville, Illinois, um, that is founded by Ryan LeShock, which is yours truly. Um, and Elevated Media is helping assist with the equipment, uh, the video equipment, the audiovisual equipment for this in-person event. They were also responsible for editing the program, the, all the clips together that you're about to see um, when the festival starts at 6.15 p.m., just three minutes away. Um, and also with assisting in the setup of this live stream so that you guys can view it from anywhere in the world where YouTube is available right now. Aside from that, again, we have two minutes remaining, two minutes, final countdown, 120 seconds, until we're about to see these first films here in the first program. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, running you through the outline, the program is available on the website, uiucfilmfest.com. It is also on this little, let me see if I can get it, that banner there, um, if you need help remembering the link. Um, it has the program, which is an outline of which films are showing at what time, and the kind of list of events. The first program is going to be short-form content, uh, which is 
comedy sketches, uh, short, short films, you know, less than 10 minutes, um, some TikToks in there, just any kind of content generated by, by University of Illinois students that was selected for, for screening. Um, after that, we're going to have a filmmaker panel, um, which is going to be three filmmakers of Lincoln Rogers, Joanna Raimo, and Ryan Lashak, here's truly. Um, on this filmmaker panel, where we are fielding questions from the audience and from you guys. So again, like I said, please engage, interact with us. Uh, that's why we were streaming this on the YouTube platform, um, is for you guys to comment and engage with us. And we're going to be responding to comments, responding to to likes, and uh, all of that, all of that good stuff. Like I can uh, bring you up here that Lincoln Rogers has uh, sent in two emojis to us. So again, if you have any questions or wanted to comment on anything, again, that is available to you on the YouTube live chat. So we have less than 60 seconds until we're going to be starting the films here. So please uh, get excited for all these films that are going to be premiering. Um, the program, again, is available on the website if you need to know which films are going to be coming up at what time. Um, I highly recommend checking that out and uh, sticking around for every single film that's going to play. After the filmmaker panel, uh, we will be starting our second program at 7.30, which is going to be that longer form narrative content, the actual short films, the sort of movie-like content uh, that's going to be starting. So again, uh, less than 30 seconds here until the uh, first films are going to start, and then uh, we're going to be sitting back and watching the films. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, um, please be engaging with us on the stream and uh, we'll be responding to comments. If you do have a question during the filmmaking panel, we're gonna be reading uh, questions from the comment section. So uh, go ahead and leave your questions there during the filmmaking panel, or if you have an, a question for the filmmakers ahead of time, uh, you can do that there. Uh, so I'm gonna jump into, here we go, the films. Bing Chiling, Melon, Matcha, Lychee, Dragon Fruit, and just for today, I got ramen. Hey, Daga, Pretty good, thanks, Usnavi. Ice cold, Bing Chiling, Melon. I am Usnavi, yeah, you probably never heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated. Exacerbated by the fact that my surname is no doubt mispronounced because my parents came from a little city around the southwest part of China. People's Republic, I love it, Jesus, I'm jealous of it, and beyond that, ever since my folks passed on, I haven't gone back, god dang, I gotta get on that, yeah, the milk has gone bad, hold up just a second, why is everything in this fridge warm and tepid, I better step it up and fight the heat, cause I'm not making any profit if the boba isn't light and sweet, Dagu, my fridge broke, everything's working, just no milk, oh no, Charles, my old recipe. One can of condensed milk. Nice. Oh, right, the church offering. Hey, Daku, you know you don't have to do that every single day, right? I called her auntie, but she's not really my auntie, though she practically raised me. She's basically my family now. You're probably thinking, what kind of Asian is he? You speak such good English. Where are you from? Well, do I have to explain? To Chinese or to American, it's kinda hard to maintain To keep my culture in name, yeah, reach for something greater I hope you're writing this down, I'm gonna test you later Our parents sacrificed just for an education This culture's got the pressure on the Asians My friends have started scabbing up and picking up their midlife crisis Catching up, it's gotten mad competitive to live with just enough In the heights, I take the lights and start my day He runs a sushi restaurant, great service guaranteed. See his daughter Nina's off at college, tuition is mad steep, so he can't sleep. Everything he gets is mad cheap. Good morning, Usnavi. 
those top balls of brown sugar milk tea. Put twenty dollars in today's suffering. Okay, must be a nice day. Gotta be. Oh my gosh, you're so excited. I mean, I flew in at 3 a.m. last night. Sweet, Daku has been cooking all week. Come by when I see you this weekend. Are we gonna eat? So the mess so walks in the room. Aha, gotten to Harvard, Stanford too. Oh no, he still teaches violin to the kid down in Westview. It's true. Well, my daughter got into MIT school. Christine. She runs track in the CS2. Jessica. My son Jason did a Nobel Prize. She's She's and that's Peggy, the Bible study group. Thanks, Miss Navi. Sunny. You're late. Chillax. You know you love me. Me and my cousin running just another time a dozen mom and pop boba shop. And oh my god, it's gone too darn slow like my man P. Cole said. People come through for a cold one knowing that their days are numbered. Just a part of the routine. Everybody's got a job. Everybody's got a dream. They gossip as I sip my coffee and smirk. The best stop to finish your homework. Bussin', I'm like $5, $6, $5.50, 5 69 I got it. You want some extra pudding? What kind? It's two quarters. Two harder waters. The lashy green you want less ice with that. The taxes at it. Once you get some practice at it, you do rep in mathematics automatically selling supplements. Metal straws with compliments. Practically everybody's pressed for success. But they search through the mess. Bounce checks to wonder what's next. In the ice. I buy my boba and I go. Got no skills. Jeez. You'll let me get a ice milk tea. Yup. Let me oh. also get a piece of vodka too. And a smoothie. And the most important, my brown sugar boba with pudding. Half, half sugar. sugar. I'm the number one earner. What? Fastest a learner. What? The boss can't keep me on the dang back burner. Yes, he can. I'm making moves. I'm making deals. But guess what? What? You still ain't got no skills. Party hard. Yo, Vanessa, show up yet? Shut up. Hey, little homie, don't get so upset. Man. Let Jesus take the wheel. Tell her how you feel on the real, or you, you ain't got, got no skills. No. a chance ask her out right now i'll see you later we can look at that lead oh do something make a move don't freeze hey. you owe me a bottle of cold milk tea are you moving just a little credit check and i'm on that downtown train well your boat was on the house okay stop you ask her out no way i'll see you later <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, smooth operator, all day, and there she goes. Yo, bro, take five. Take a walk outside, you look exhausted. Lost, don't let life slide. The whole world is struggling, times is tight, and you're stuck to this corner like a street light. Yeah, I'm a street light, choking on the heat. The world spins around while I'm frozen to my seat. The people that I know keep on rolling down the street. But every day is different, so I'm switching up the beat Cause my parents came with nothing They built this little store, sure they wanted more But their faith was at their core And it's all about the legacy they left with me It's destiny, and someday God will show me What this destiny has next for me We came to work and to live, we got a lot in common It reminds me that I came from miles away Asian Americans, we are not stuck Patience and faith, I'm unafraid. In the heights, I've got today. But as for you, as no I know you gotta just keep watching, you'll see. The late nights, you'll taste fun and right. So you can take a little spice, I ain't gonna say it twice. Turn up the street lights, we're taking a flight. A couple of days in the life of what it's like. The Naperville Heights.
I know, I I've missed you. you. Um, but I have something I need to tell you. Yeah, tell me anything. Um, What's up? I have a bun in my oven. What? I, it what just, are you talking it just about? Happened. How does something like that just happen? That doesn't make any sense. The oven was 400 degrees and the dough just, it just rised. I don't know. It, just look at me. Do I look like I can handle that sort of responsibility? I don't know. It, it just happened. I can't do this. What do you mean? I can't. I'm sorry. Why are you following me? I live this way. Oh. Whatever.
उड़ा पतंग मेरा हवा में हो के मलंग जग की कोई रीत न जाने मैं तो बस तेरी हुई दीवाने मेरा जो संग तेरा उड़ा पतंग मेरा हवा में हो के मलंग Permission, make my decision to test my limits. Cause it's my business, God as my witness. Stop what I finished. Don't need no holder, taking control of this kind of moment. I'm locked and loaded, completely focused. My mind is open. All that you got, gonna skin. Jog, 一共就这些了。我热了一遍，重新装盘又端出来了。哎，明明早就订好这一单了，怎么一到晚上就突然就说不来的呢？他们不要了，正好啊，咱俩趁着过节享受一顿。你说倒是轻巧，可就光光想想这些成本，我就难以安心享受啊。再说了，这菜我也享受不来，这苦瓜一斤钱，明明没什么人吃的。今天我去买的时候。竟然只剩下几个了，鱼啊！其实我觉得挺对不起你的。当初头脑一热，来美国开中餐馆，还把你给卷了进来。哎，周哥，大学的时候我就觉得你一定能行，我可是完全心甘情愿给你过来的。再说了，现在咱们只是受了点大环境影响罢了。哎，大环境，现在不光食材、人工全部都涨价了。最严重的是这疫情呢、啊，闹得人心惶惶的。不说这些了，鱼啊，你和你女朋友我都一年没见了吧？周哥，我来这边也是想多赚点钱，给他一个安稳的家。我一个人受苦，总比他和我一起受苦要好吧？哎，鱼，酒还有剩的吗？有啊，还剩半瓶。怎么样，我手艺还不错吧？我从不吃苦瓜，我妈越让我吃，我就越抵触。就像现在，我妈不要让我和 Leslie 在一起一样，不要让我放弃保研，不要让我来美国创业。她越不要让我做什么，但我越要证明给她看，我是对的。不说这些了，喝。哥，大学的时候我就佩服你的魄力。为了在美国的女朋友
这都过来创业了，网页名额说不要就不要了。说实在的，我没有这样的胆量。我上学的时候，学习也不好，工作也没着落。我只是觉得呀、啊，生活不止眼前的苟且，还有诗和远方嘛。这才跟你过来创业的。结果你猜怎么着？生活不止眼前的苟且，还有他妈的远方的苟且。嗨，谁说不是呢？生活在别处还是生活呀。其实说实在的，我对咱们餐馆比你还没信心呢。咱们来这两年了，第一年刚回本，本来我以为今年能开始赚点钱了，结果这疫情啊，一眼望不到头啊。事业，生活。感情，也许是我想要的太多了。有时候什么都想要，但是到最后什么都得不到，白忙活。哥，我可不希望你这两年的坚持毫无意义。说吧，你说来自己多久没联系了？一年零三个月了。我始终觉得我们之间还没好好结束过呢。我总觉得他会接受我的幼稚。懂得我放下一切的坚持。你们俩到底怎么了？为什么你不主动去联系他呢？不管怎么样，至少把话说清楚啊！他说我们之间没有未来，我却放弃了国内的学业和父母安排好的工作，来到美国。我本以为他会被我而感动的，可没想到。只得到了一句幼稚和漫无止境的冷战。我当然想要过去联系他，但是我不敢。就像我不敢尝试这道菜一样，我不是怕他苦，而是怕他并不难吃。我害怕，我现在所坚持这一切都没有意义。你说我该怎么办吧？给他打电话，找他要个说法。不行啊。我们已经一年多没说过话了。别怂，你今天晚上还想不想要个结果了？再过几分钟就是明年了，你不会想把事情再拖一年吧？妈的，打就打，谁怕谁？哎先别挂，我只是想祝你新年快乐。之前是我太冲动了，我太想咱们之间要个结果。我固执的认为，如果我不来美国，我们就不可能会有一个结局，就永永远无法摆脱家里给我安排的人生轨迹。所以我很害怕失败，不愿意再失去你。我好像不需要他来给我答案了。很多事情不是不计后果的强求就可以快速得到的。这苦瓜好像也没那么苦嘛。事业上的失败，感情上的失去，好像也没有那么心酸可怕。承认生活的苟且，好像比漫无目的的坚持更加艰难。哥，我懂你了。你说我们这餐馆还会继续开下去吗？曾经我的坚持。只是为了证明年少的冲动是正确的，但是现在我更希望给予这份坚持更多的意义。哦，还有半分钟就新年了，太阳明天会照常升起。走，我们去迎接新年去。
When you look at Quidditch, it looks like chaos. It's confusing. There are people running everywhere. There's balls flying in all directions. There's maybe a big play here or there. When you see it for the first time, all you see is a mess. But that's not how I see it. When you step onto the pitch, you enter a flow. Everything's moving around you, and you just need to react accordingly. Every motion, your passing, your running, your tackling, has been practiced over and over again. It has become second nature. I love sharing the field with my team. We're trying to achieve a common goal. Quidditch is a special game because anybody can play. You don't need to be the tallest or the fastest or the strongest. You just need the willingness to learn, belief in yourself and the trust in your teammates. To others, Quidditch might look like chaos, but even chaos can be beautiful.
Sorry? You ain't did nothing. I shouldn't have been messing with you. It's all right. I'm not protesting. I'm so embarrassed. You don't need to be embarrassed. This dancing? I had no business in your music. I was just curious. That's all. Curious is okay with me. I like curious. You like Motown? Yeah, I like it. Who are you digging on? I don't know, um, everyone you have here. The Temptations, Four Tops, Gladys Knight and the Pips. You know about Gladys Knight and the Pips? Sure. Uh, the Supremes, Martha and the Vandellas. You digging on Negro music? Something wrong with that? Maybe not. What you dig about it? Depends on who's singing. What about the Temptations? The Temps? Uh. They're dancing. <laughs> Total synchronicity. Their harmony, their bass. What all good music should be made of? Mary Wells. Ah, voice like cashmere. It's real sweet sound. Mm, listen at you. Marvin Gaye. Now Marvin is something altogether different. His voice just sort of pulls on you, you know? How you mean? Uh, I don't know, like, tugs at some place deep in you, some place no one else can touch, and it just sort of moves you in a way you even didn't know you could be moved, you know? Yep, it's 
Good music. Who's the artist? Artist? Oh, you mean that thing? <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, Shell drew that a long time ago. Uh, my old man, man. <laughs> he used to have me and Shell down here all the time. He gave us permission to write on the walls. Mark your territory. He'd say. So we did. She likes stars. Did she? We we'll make stars out of everything. I mean, Christmas lights, dominoes, pencils, <laughs> whatever. And this? Uh, that's supposed to be Shell. Uh -huh. I drew it for her. Six years old trying to be thoughtful. <laughs> but uh, she cried and told mama that I was trying to make her look ugly on purpose. Uh, said that I should wash it off, but daddy convinced mama that it was art and that we'd laugh about it one day. Shell still ain't laughed yet. <laughs> <laughs> you draw the fist too? Uh, nah, pops drew that. Said it was Joe Lewis's fist. Said the, the brown bomber is always gonna be a champ in his house. Said that black fist is gonna set us free. That's what my old man used to say. You were close to your folks. Pretty tight knit. Whole family. You? No, I, my folks split when I was a kid. We don't really talk much. I'm kind of a loner. Oh. Say, uh, say, what happened to you? Oh, um. Somebody hurt you? Langston, I think that. Lake. Lake. I think it's best we leave that night in the past. And you sure it's gonna stay there? That night I, when I saw you out, something happened. Okay, I saw you look at me. I heard you without no words. You know what I mean? You heard me? I, 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 I know, I know it looked kind of crazy, me being what I am and you, but in that moment, all the trouble could come on me ain't matter. Only thing mattered was that I could see, I, I felt you needing something. Couldn't pull away. What did you feel?
want. Text now subscriber you are trying to reach is not available. Please leave your message after the tone. Hey there. It's been a while. I'm sorry it took me this long to finally call. I truly apologize. I know we haven't been talking since I moved three states away, but... I really need you right now. I guess I'm... slowly drifting. Losing connection to the world. It's a strange feeling when... you feel your life, school, and... everything falling apart day after day. And the rest of the world just keeps turning. It's a one-way trip and... No one ever stops. Never lets me catch up. And so I find myself... Here. Trapped. In a glass cage as I fade into a darkness of a reality. I cannot bring myself to live in. But this is the only way it can ever be. I have no one by my side. No one that wants to go at my pace. Every day, I wish that person would just magically appear right in front of me. But they don't. Because you gotta work for everything in life, right? How can I build true friendships and relationships when my own foundations are crumbling? It's hopeless. It dug deeper and deeper. This feeling. Until it destroyed all I had within me to defend my soul. I have become so hollow. Even the slightest touch could make me fall apart. Countless emotional breakdowns have weighed down my already full ship. There's nothing left to stop it from sinking. I feel ashamed and embarrassed in front of myself, you, and all the people around me. Because I never really see who I am. And when they do, walk away. Friend after friend around me fade away day by day, and I have no power to do anything but watch. Why can't everything just be still for a moment? A moment where I can slow down and be who I really am, even if it's only a split second. All I can do is rear on the memories over and over again. The ones when I was young, when I even carefree. The days when I was free to hope and dream. When I had friends, you, and a life that I cherished. <laughs> Remember how you used to wake me up every morning and cook me breakfast? And now you guys would always surprise me on the weekend with a new adventure. I'm just not completely sad. I finally realized how important those moments are to me. 
now it just all feels like a dream. Perhaps it's silly to think that I could ever get those days back. I think most of me knows that. But there is a part of me that wanders away from the truth. A part that still believes. And it is that part that got me through today. Sorry for the long rant, but I hope you're doing well. Bye. The reason why I'm voting is because I am a young black woman in America. And yeah, I'm only one person, but my vote matters just like yours. I'm voting because as a queer black woman in America, my rights always seem to be something to debate. I'm voting to be a voice for those who were unable to make their voices heard in this election. I'm voting for actual systematic change towards equity and equality, active problem solving for climate change, and overall humanity. I am not only voting for president, I'm voting for the future of a nation that believes in science and doesn't think that equality is a political issue, but rather a human right. I think everyone should vote because it would be a great disservice to all of the women who fought so hard for our rights if we didn't vote. I'm voting for not only equality, but equity a system that recognizes its faults and the damage that it's done in the past and then actively works to fix it. And I, I feel like that's what everyone else should be voting for too. I'm voting for an all-inclusive America where everyone has a seat at the table, one that believes in climate change and one that does not prioritize money over the well-being of citizens. I'm voting because I know my vote counts and so does yours. This is my first election that I'm participating in, and I'm glad to contribute to creating change in America in terms of climate change, racial justice, immigration, and even more. I am not voting for my own personal interests, but I'm voting for the people I love whose rights are at stake. Remember that every single voice counts in this election. And with unity, we can make a change. Our ancestors didn't fight for nothing. So if you're not voting for yourself, recognize your privilege and vote for those who this country tries so hard to oppress. Alrighty, you heard it here, folks, guys. We have a 10-minute intermission here at the Spurlock Theater on the University of Illinois campus. Uh, so we're going to be resuming our programming at 7.15. And we're resuming with a filmmaker panel, uh, which is going to be um, Lincoln Rogers, Joanna Raimo, and Ron Lashak, yours truly. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking about um, student filmmaking on campus and what it's like. Uh, fielding questions not only from the in-person audience here, but if you are watching this on YouTube, um, we encourage you to leave a comment 
Um, if you do and we see it, uh, we will uh, do our best to respond to it um, as soon as we can. During the live panel, we're going to have 15 minutes, and then the second program is going to start at 7.30. And this is the program you are not going to want to miss. If there is anything that you've been considering watching so far, you're going to want to watch at 7.30 uh, with all of the long-form narratives. This is what is the culmination of so many classes, so many projects, is these long-form short film, long-form short film narratives. Um, we're going to get things started with the Goji Project, directed by Lincoln Rogers, which actually had an earlier screening today in this same Spurlock Theater. Uh, it was streamed earlier today uh, for an audience of a similar size and uh, is having its second debut later today, just three hours after the first initial premiere. Uh, it's going to be a really good time. Uh, in addition to that, we have A Tint of Red, which is uh, co-directed by Joanna Ramo and Gio Gila Sanchez. Um, Following that, we have uh, another notable mention is Another Day, uh, which is a co-creation between the artist, Michael the Author, and uh, Ryan the Shock, yours truly. Um, special shout out to uh, Michael the Author, as known as Michael the Shock. It is his birthday today, so everybody wish him a happy birthday. Uh, special shout out to uh, you, Michael, listening at home. Um, and then after that, another notable mention is the capstone showing of Bodies of Water, directed by yours truly, Ryan the Shock, um, featuring some of the actors that you're going to see in the second program here. Uh, so definitely stick around until about 8.15, 8.20 is when that uh, Bodies of Water premiere is going to start, and it's going to actually start with a little vi vignette, a little uh, promotion uh, before the video, about a two-minute clip of the behind-the-scenes process of what, of what student filmmaking actually looks like. So it's very interesting material. You're going to want to check it out. Um, and then the film itself will play directly after that, and, uh, and uh, we'll get it started. So uh, we've got about five more minutes here until the panel kicks in. I'm going to leave you with a shot of the audience. Um, so you can just kind of monitor how that looks. And uh, we'll get things back started here at 7.15. Thank you guys for tuning in.
anally, and, and, it's, and it's all that, um, those stressors of, I actually shoot in the water with, with running equipment. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine that process. Like dealing with water technology, you know, those two things really don't get stuff. Because I do know on my own looking out here, it is dark. 
Um, I would say uh, take it seriously and don't jump the gun. Um, I think it's easy to think that you have the resources to do something bigger um, than you can. And I think I think that at the student level is really um, more rewarding to focus on a, a really good smaller thing than a, a longer and you know, lower quality project. Um, and Speaking of somebody who has started a really big project and then not finished it, uh, that can be really, you know, that can, that can hurt a lot as a filmmaker. Um, but it feels great to go into something with a really strong plan and to produce something that you're proud of. So I would say, you know, make sure you have a plan, make sure you know what you're getting into, um, and make sure it's a vision that you feel good about. Um, my advice would be to surround yourself with good people. So I and surround, and the people that you want to make a film with, I would advise working with before, because then you can kind of know how you work together, because you're going to spend a lot of time with your crew and cast. That's just the reality of it. So a lot of my crew, I had worked on um, journalism projects before with, so I, I knew how we worked together, um, and or I've been in math classes with. Um, I hadn't worked with a lot of the actors before, but I think that's like more fun and, and easier to do on the spot. Um, and they did an amazing job. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, like surround yourself with good, hardworking people that are really committed. And uh, just go for it. Also, I think that I spend a lot of time questioning whether I should do things. And I think that at a certain point with a film, even if it doesn't turn out exactly how you wanted it, you did something, you made something artistic. Yeah, I'm going to answer this kind of quickly because we have to start right at 7.30. Um, but <laughs> my thing would be, would be planning. And I think what you're going to do and I can definitely attest to this is the pre-production is the biggest, longest part of any production. And that includes for everyone and I is, uh, is um, Google Docs and just making huge, huge Google folders of all these documents, all these scheduling, all this everything, all these scripts, shot lists, everything. Um, so just be super organized that way. Um, is, is my best advice that I can give people. And I also want to give a little message, is that um, before uh, Bodies of Water plays, there's a little special message for my actors and a behind the scenes sort of vignette of, of the process. So a little special something I want to give you guys. And also, shout out Michael Lashak, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Michael. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to build a computer that simulates real life? 
Now, let's assume that you think the answer to that question is yes. Let me pose you a second question. If you were living in a simulation, would you be able to tell? My name is Goji Tan. And I'm an inventor. When I was little, my dad would bring me toys to take apart. I would pull out their insides and put them back together into something completely new. Then he would help me think of a new life for the toy that I made. A name, a story. We would build a world and talk about how happy my toys were living there. All I wanted when I was a kid was to live in those worlds with him. But then he left. He didn't leave a note or anything. He was just gone. And all he left me with was curiosity. That's when I stopped playing with toys and started building computers. When I look back on it now, I guess I have him to thank for planning the question in my head. I remember his face looking down at me and asking, If you lived in a simulation, would you be able to tell? It's the last memory I have of him. I didn't know the answer. So that's what I started building. It may not look like much, but this is it. The answer. A simulation. A world inside a computer. And today, I've got to go convince a bunch of rich kids to use their dad's money to pay for it. G10? Yes. Thank you. <sighs> um, hello. Thank you all for coming. What I would like to present to you today is a machine that I believe can change the world. Let me ask you a question. What would you do with a machine that can simulate real life? A simulation so advanced that it's almost real. Well, let me give you a few suggestions. How about simulating real-world infrastructure and testing against natural disasters? Or using disease simulations to prevent pandemics? You could test social theories, evolutionary theories. These are all questions that have been asked before. But no simulation has been able to overcome what we call the mirror problem. That is, even our most advanced simulations are simply approximations of real life. Reflections, not the real thing. I believe that I have created an algorithm that goes beyond reflection. It doesn't require a massive computer server. It's not much bigger than a normal desktop. That's because the power of the simulation doesn't come from hardware. The power of the simulation comes from the algorithm, an algorithm that I wrote. It's a product of almost 10 years of coding and engineering. What I'm asking for is an investment of $25,000 to develop power regulation for the machine. 
As it stands now, the machine is fully capable of operating at a low level voltage, a consumer level voltage. But without regulation, the machine gets power hungry. Without power regulation, it could steal power from an entire city block when it turns on. I'm sorry, hold on. Does that mean you haven't even turned on the machine yet? Will I? No. Not yet. Can you at least tell us how it works? Yes. It uses procedural generation to create a natural world. Like a video game? The algorithm understands the way things occur naturally, and it automates creation according to those natural rules. Each individual is created by the algorithm and then registered as a traceable data point. But the key is that they do not know they're in a simulation, which is what makes it realistic. Any parameter can be adjusted, and the results aren't just statistical. They're not random. They're human. I'm sorry, Miss Tan, but I'll believe it when I see it. Great minds don't wait for approval. It's just a little electricity. To whom it may concern, I deeply apologize for wasting your time today. However, I have incredible news. My simulation works. It would benefit from power regulation, but it works. And it's incredible. I watched the simulated version of myself for hours. She acts exactly like a real person. She has thoughts, feelings, relationships. She's real. Like me. Shocking developments in Indonesia this morning as a high magnitude tsunami destroys much of Jakarta's infrastructure. 
test infrastructure against natural disasters. A new variant of the flu is spreading like wildfire through the East Coast today as scientists run disease simulations to prevent pandemics. Hi, Goji. I'm so proud of you. You made something amazing. I did it for you. I know. I was watching the whole time. Why did you leave? Where did you go? I never really left. I've always been with you, just... not in the way that you thought. What does that mean? Where were you? Somewhere a lot like this. You made all of this? I created it for you. Am I real? Is any of this real? Everything is real. You have thoughts, feelings, memories. You created a whole world by yourself. <laughs> Just like me. When I turned it on, she didn't realize it was her first day. What was my first day? The day that you remember me leaving. So, all those memories? Us, together? I can never be there in the way I wanted to. Those memories were my way of showing you how much I love you. Why couldn't you be here? You're here now, what is this, some kind of dream? It was crucial to the project that I didn't interfere with your process. I needed to know if you could create your own simulation without my help. As for where we are now, this is... Yes, this is some kind of dream. You can try it yourself on your simulation if you'd like. Now that you've done it, the project is complete. I can finally be here with you. The project. The Goji Project. I feel like I should be angry at you. I wouldn't blame you. 
Do you feel angry? No. No, I just feel... confused. It's like my whole life I've been searching for an answer to the question, but... You already answered it. It was never so much about the question, Goji. It's been answered so many times before. I wasn't the first. <laughs> Clearly, I wasn't the last. The true test is what comes afterwards. What your life becomes now that you understand the nature of your reality. Are there more of me? How many simulations are you running? I only ever needed just the one. You are one of a kind, Goji. What am I? You're my daughter. Hello. You're me. Yeah. I'm you. I guess I must be dreaming. Yeah, something like that. I like your hair. I like yours too. Do you remember dad? Of course. I think about him every day. Do you ever wish he'd come back? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I get angry at him for leaving. Sometimes I worry that missing him has become such a part of me that if he came back, I wouldn't know what to do. What if he never comes back? I don't think he needs to. He's still with me in a lot of ways. I still remember his face, the way he held me. Remember the times we laughed together? It's sad to remember the way things were. But if I didn't have those memories, I think I'd be a lot worse. I know he loved me. He loved us. Are you happy? I am. Most of the time. 
We have a pretty good life, all things considered. What if none of it was real? Then I would say, whoever put it all together made something really beautiful. My name is Goji Tan. Let me ask you a question. If you were living in a simulation, would you be able to tell? To a broken world without the tools to fix it They say I'm gonna save it, put the pressure on the sick kid The older generations, they've been asking for forgiveness So if the world is ending, I just hope they have to witness The death of destruction spawned from a depth of corruption All the sweat and production, all the overconsumption, it's no discussion This ignorance is bound to have some nasty repercussions And Yellowstone been due for an eruption I just hope it blow before the snow turn black from our combustion to have a future and then i met you and now i'm kind of wanting what the rest do a nice house with the best view and some pets too so let's do this and make the next move but life is hard when you're living in a chess game sacrificing pieces now to make it in the end game but we gon' make it i put that on my life another day i'll be on stage it won't happen tonight but i can rest assured knowing i'm a last to the light and then wake up going straight back to the fight <gasps> I don't have 
to live forever I just have to live another day Okay, I think we got it. Sweet. Hey. Oh, it's easy to get stuck in a loop. And that's the funny thing about noticing you're in a loop because as soon as you notice the loop, you've broken it. It no longer exists because it has been found. Noticing you're in a loop is the key to breaking out of it, to gaining your freedom. I had to do something. I had to clear my mind. Cold air. Low light. Fast movement. Where was I going? What was I doing? I don't think even I knew. I had overexerted myself. I felt like I was gonna puke. I rolled over on my back to stop the world from spinning. How long had it been since I had just laid in the grass? I opened my eyes and then it hit me. How long had it been since I looked up at the night sky? It's too easy to not do. You'll miss the small things the most. And what's the cure? Showers. Showers are this sort of magical zone where time slows. Seconds feel like minutes. Your mind is released from time to drift freely from thought to thought. It's in this zone where you gather the creativity and motivation to do. There's just one requirement. You must want to do. And if you don't want to do, it's easy to get stuck in a loop. And that's the funny thing about noticing you're in a loop, because as soon as you notice the loop, you've broken it. Don't waste your potential on such a useless career. Make yourself useful in this world. Become somebody that everyone will know and remember. Maybe they were right. I should have chosen to become someone that elementary school me would have.
Hey, Mar. Hey. Why are you painting with the lights off? I don't know. I just prefer it that way. You know, red is really your color. Thanks, April. What's up? I'm okay. Um, but I'm kind of stressed out about the art exhibition. Why is that? Well, I'm at a creative roadblock. I can't seem to come up with anything that'll get noticed by others. Why don't you just make something that you like? Yeah, I could. But like, how? Well, I would just think about how art isn't about pleasing other people like Mr. Smith. We're making something look pretty for an art show. It's something bigger than that. It's about diving into your deepest and darkest fantasies. And then putting it on a canvas raw for other people to interpret themselves. Yeah. I guess. I'm jealous. You never seem to have a lack of inspiration for your work. I guess it just comes naturally to me. On a different note, have you seen Tommy around? No, I haven't. Why do you need him? No way. You actually went through with it and slept with him. I seriously didn't think you would. I mean, I know you do that with other guys, but I thought Tommy was different. I mean, it's Tommy. He's probably so <laughs> obsessed with you right now. I mean, even more than anybody else. There is no way he's not hooked on you. I mean, he is annoying, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized like, I don't know, I just, I was in a really dark mindset last night and I needed someone else to talk to. Everything else was just trivial. Trivial? Girl, you could have just hit me up for a good combo and a brainstorm sesh instead of hooking up with Tommy to it, feel better. It's not like that, April. Look, you're my go-to and I know you'll always be there for me, but Last night, I just needed someone else to talk to. What? Am I not a good enough hype man for you? It's not that you're not a good enough hype man for me, and you know that. I just, I didn't think you'd be interested in what I was doing with an art project. Let me just catch you up to speed about it right now. I'm thinking about doing an art project that's based on some serial killers and the art they made once they were incarcerated. Some pretty dark stuff, but just pouring it into something constructive, the art they made. I find it super intriguing. What do you think? Really, Mar? That is definitely your true crime obsession coming through again. <laughs> I mean, your art's already dark enough as it is. People are gonna start to get worried. I know it sounds weird at first, but like I said the other day, I'm just trying to take my art to the next level. I mean, name an artist who wasn't a little fucked up in the head. Yeah, I guess. But what does this have to do with Tommy? Shh, come on, you're fine. Hey, Mara. April. Oh, you added a square. Your mom's a square. <laughs> That's good. Interesting. What are you guys talking about? Mara's insane, but most likely brilliant idea for the art exhibition that you apparently already know all about. Oh, that. Yeah, Mara was telling me about it last night. I mean, it's an interesting concept, but I can't really visualize it. Do you want to hang out later this week or something and <clears throat> talk more about it? I'm down. Um, yeah, maybe this time you can actually help me with it. Looks like class is starting now, though. Do you want to, like, class maybe Thursday? Class is or... starting. 
Finish the painting for this session. So you have. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. What, what, what does this little piece? It's mm -hmm. supposed to represent the drive and curiosity that I have towards the topic of my new painting. Along with the feeling of clarity, knowing that my parents were wrong in telling me that choosing to go to art school was a waste of time. Yes, that is what it stands for. No, I, I feel that you should surround people, yourself with people that really make you happy, that care about the art that you're doing. I can be that person needs. I think we're out of time. <laughs> I do have to get to my next patient. Uh, yes. A few hours. But if you need me, I will be on call. Uh, you know my number. Um, and yeah, if you need anything to de-stress or loosen up. I do care about the mental health of my patients. Yeah, I'll let you know if anything comes up. All right, well, good luck on the painting, beautiful. Hey, Gordon. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback on the color. April. Tommy. Have you seen Mara anywhere? No. Why? Have you texted her or talked to her at all? Maybe like a week ago. Because she hasn't been answering my, my phone calls or my text messages at all. Like as of recently? That's kind of weird. I mean, Mara's usually a hot mess, but she takes time to respond. Is she okay? Or is she, is she seeing someone else? I wish she would just talk to me. Oh, God. You know what? I'll go over there. I'll talk to her. I'll check in on her. Okay. All right, see you, April. Okay. Bye, Tommy.
I came here as soon as I could. Uh, you sounded like you were having a panic attack or you're about to hurt yourself. Uh, uh, what's wrong? Are you, you doing all right? I was just wondering if we could have a session right now. Uh, um, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, and just, just get my stuff together, okay? Gordon, remember that thing we did in the bedroom the other night? I was wondering if we could do that again. Mara, I don't think that's the greatest idea given the condition you're in right now. What? Now you don't want me? You wanted me a few nights ago, and the night before that, and the night before that. Mara, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. I really think that this, that this thing that we've been doing, it's very inappropriate and unprofessional of me. It was a spur of the moment decision and I, I just, I don't see it going anywhere in the future. It doesn't seem like it's good for my professional path and everything that I've been working towards, all right? It, it, it's unsafe and especially in the environment that you're putting me in, it, I can't do it anymore, I can't. Mara, I don't think what we're doing is right, all right? I really should not be doing this. I mean, it's inappropriate. It's unprofessional to what I'm doing, my resume. I mean, I just got out of college. I can't ruin what I'm doing. Oh, shh. It's too late for that now. Mara, it's Tommy. Can you talk right now? Mara. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Laura. What the fuck? What the fuck, what? Wait, is this some kind of joke? No, it's not a joke. It's my art medium. Um, this isn't art. 
this is this is fuck this is fucking anything but art. Well, you know that art is subjective, Tommy. And different artists use different mediums. I've always been interested in the human body. How men are interested in the feminine physique and how we are so disposable. Just flesh and bone. It's really beautiful. No, this isn't you. This isn't art. At least I'll become a household name. I'll never be forgotten. I mean, who wouldn't want my collection of human macabre art, Tommy? You are fucked up. Th th this isn't you. I don't know what happened, but, but this isn't you. The thing is, Tommy, I only need one piece to finish my collection. Would you help me? No, Mara, this isn't you. This isn't art. I mean, at least with this piece, I'll become a household name. No one will forget me. Because I dared to do what others couldn't. I mean, who wouldn't want my collection of human macabre Mara, art, you are fucked up. Maybe with this piece, what you happened? can help me. No, no, no. Please, please. Tell me. I don't want to be a great artist. I want to be the best. <laughs> Hey, April. Sorry for not calling you yesterday. I was, well, busy finishing up my grand finale of an art project for the exhibition. You'll be surprised when you get here in the morning. I think that I did the best that I could with the pieces, and I believe that you'll think so too. I wanted to say good luck with the exhibition today. I can't believe it's finally here. It's crazy how we talked about it four years ago when we started school and it's finally here. I'm sorry I never got to see your work, but I'm sure it's great. You're one of the best artists in the school, you know, besides me, of course. <laughs> I wanted to be an artist for as long as I can remember. My parents always said, don't waste your potential on such a useless career make yourself useful in this world to become somebody that everyone will know and remember maybe they were right i should have chosen to become someone that elementary school me would have never mind all i know is that i will be known for my art hopefully we can see each other again sometime soon but until then keep doing your thing girl you will become an amazing artist someday. Bye. What song are you listening to? Uh, right now, I think it's uh, Waterfall by Stone Road. She's a waterfall. What song are you listening to? I'm listening to Shadow of a Cloud by Michael the Author. The way I sink to knees and pray for peace, I think you think that I would need a piece to freeze my heart with ease, but all I need is altered schemes to breathe like breathe to peace. That's what the altar brings. I don't like Chief Keef. Sleep is all the best doctor. Don't like. Uh, I'm actually listening to some lo-fi beats. What song are you on right now? Right now, I'm on a song called Hazy by UKDD and Hoffy Beats. Yet unknown, my prison.
A lot of you are probably wondering what it's like to work on a Ryan the Shock production. Wow, um, where do I start? That was so good. How's uh, your experience been uh, being directed by Ryan? It's a good, like others have said, he definitely has ideas of what he wants and he is really efficient. We do like a take and it's good and we move on. He's really efficient and we get like the takes done really fast and it's really fun working with him. I guess how was your experience being directed by Ryan? <laughs> What if, I told, what if I told you, he's like, it is awful. He's a taskmaster. No, he's fine. Uh, he's great. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, are we doing a shot of taco or what? <laughs> What are your what are your feelings about getting your hair wet? No, 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 no. Just getting my hair wet. How's working with Ryan and stuff? He's just the worst. I hate him. I hate his writing. I hate working for him. He's saying good things, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's great. He's legendary. Love the guy. Can I put my Instagram? I'll just be like, my Instagram is. Yeah, follow me. That's a wrap! I'm sorry. I know this is hard for you. I mean, it was a good turnout. A lot of people came. I'm a little surprised no one remember me. I mean, we met at Elle's birthday. Will you stop talking about my sister? I'm sorry. I do. He used to come here when we were kids. Uh, it's our little hideaway from up back. When things would get rough, I bring Elle out here and I would protect her. You guys are some troublemakers, huh? We weren't troublemakers. Oh, that's 
was. You know how often that's I was... forgot. I forgot I'm sorry. Will you just stop saying that? Saying what? I'm sorry. Ellie's gone. She's gone. I'm all alone. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be okay. She's gone. It's gonna be okay. Stop. I saw her. I saw her. And it's I'm all fine. alone. It's gonna be fine. I saw her. I'm here. You're not here. I'm here. I'm here for you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You're not here. Yes, I am. You're not here. Did you know I had two fish growing up? Well, actually, I only had one fish. And my brother, he had the other one. And we won him from the state fair. And, and, and my mom, she was pissed because she had to buy two tanks. But she couldn't say no to that look on our faces. And one day, my brother, he was so upset because he felt guilty that he was keeping his fish in the tank. When he knew that there was all this, this, these vast bodies of water that this fish could be exploring. So he released it. He released his fish. And yours? I kept it. I mean, I was young. I don't like looking at it. What I'm trying to say, obviously, um, we never saw my brother's fish again. But he probably lived a much better life. I mean, it was probably thriving. I don't know. Is that it? That's your story? No, no, no. You're my fish. I'm your fish? Grace, you can't keep yourself locked away in your apartment. You can't do that. Elle wouldn't want that for you. Wow. Did you rehearse that? Okay, listen to me. I'm, I'm worried. About no, you. seriously! Did you write that down? I'm, s I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Why are you still here? Are you serious? You broke up with me two weeks ago. in your pocket. They were just in my pocket. I was... They weren't... Then who were they for?
right. Okay, Grace. I was gonna fucking say it. I cannot keep fucking doing this shit anymore. I, I'm sorry. I know this shit is hard. But I'm trying to be there for you and you just keep yelling at me. We're fucking done. <laughs> Hello? What's that? <laughs> oh my god. Don't go in there! Wait, what are you doing?
not recognize the bodies in the water. The following public service announcement from the SCP Foundation contains material which may be cognito hazardous. If you feel unwell or believe you recognize the bodies in the water, call for help immediately. SCP-2316 is a lake within in which anomalous sensory phenomena manifest. In the last six days, this anomaly has been reported in your, lo in your location. As such, it is essential you remember at all times that you do not recognize the bodies in the water. Andrew. Yeah. 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 We love Andrew. 
Okay, we are at a film festival right now, so this one is really about testing your film festival knowledge. First appearing at Sundance Film Festival in 2021. <laughs> this film won three Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay this year. What is the title? Uh, Go out it is correct. Yeah, you said color, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> now you're first.
folks, you can go to our website, UIUC Student Film Fest. UIUCStudentFilmFest.com and vote on there. Sorry to say that when you are all leaving, but thank you for coming out.